St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Our celebrant today is the pastor of St. Maria Goretti Parish in Scarborough, Ontario, Father Edwin Galea. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from Louise Turcotte of Scarborough, Ontario. This Mass is offered in memory of her parents, Lucy and Louis Aukoffer, for her husband, Hilliard Turcotte, and for the souls who have no one to pray for them. Our thanks to Louise Turcotte for choosing to remember your deceased family members in this way. It means that this sacred celebration will be seen by thousands of people across Canada, and on their behalf, I thank you. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross, and we call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who willed that your only begotten Son should undergo the cross to save the human race, grant, we pray, that we, who have known his mystery on earth, may merit the grace of his redemption in heaven, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Numbers. As they journeyed across the desert, the Israelites left Mount Hor by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, we have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it on a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. With A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. The cross of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. What a source of inspiration. What a source of power. Let's break open the Word of God that helps us to reflect on the mystery of today's tremendous feast. In the Gospel, Jesus has a conversation with Nicodemus in which Jesus speaks of his coming crucifixion. Then he refers to his future resurrection, connecting it to the first covenant event involving Moses and the bronze serpent in the desert. When the Israelites were afflicted with serpents in the wilderness because of their sinfulness, God instructed Moses to fashion a fiery serpent, set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten, when they see it, shall live. The bronze serpent is a foreshadowing of the cross of Christ, which gains everlasting life for those who trust in Jesus and in his victory on the cross. Over the years, I've been to a few World Youth Day celebrations. The image of the cross is a pivotal, iconic, and celebrated feature at these gatherings. It helps the participants to focus their imagination, their spiritual creativity, and their devotion on the person of Jesus and on his sacrifice. One of the songs that regularly surfaces at these glorious events has this refrain, Love lifted on the cross for me, my Lord, my God, my salvation. Love lifted high to set me free, my Lord, my God, my salvation. The effect of Jesus being lifted up on the cross and his resurrection and exaltation at the right hand of the Heavenly Father is that we are born again in the Spirit and adopted as sons and daughters of God. St. John the Evangelist tells us that the love of God has no limit. We are told, for God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. In the fall of 1984, blessed Pope John Paul II gave his per paid his first pastoral visit to Canada as our Holy Father. On the 14th of September that year, I sat in front of the pulpit at St. Michael Cathedral in Toronto with several hundred other priests from Toronto and from neighboring dioceses who filled the church as the Holy Father addressed us, reflecting on the feast that we celebrate today, he spoke about our journey of faith. He said, the cross represents the culmination of Jesus' priestly service. The power of the cross is the reconciling force that directs the destiny of the whole of creation. And we believe that Christ's cross offers contemporary society with its scientific discoveries and technological advancement and with its alienation and despair, a message of reconciliation and hope. I believe that the words which blessed Pope John Paul II shared with us contain tremendous insight 
into meaningful living in a world that desperately tries to redeem itself without recourse to the power which emanates from the cross, alienation and despair are rampant. The Pope spoke with great credibility. His life experience of suffering and of triumph over evil has been well documented. Only three years earlier, in 1981, he had been the victim of an assassination attempt in St. Peter's Square. He survived. The following year, he visited his would-be assassin in jail to forgive him. What a witness to the healing and saving power of the cross. Today's feast invites us to put our faith in Jesus Christ into practice, to find a practical way to witness to the power of the cross. We believe that God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the gift of the Holy Spirit, so we can open our hearts to God's cleansing love and clean up the way we treat others. We believe that God's love can transform our minds so we can renew the way we think of others. And we believe that God's love is powerful enough to lift us above sin so we can ask the Holy Spirit to help us conquer every base passion and every evil addiction that enslaves us to patterns of self-destructive behavior. The cross of Jesus Christ is a source of inspiration and power. Let us venerate it daily and let us not lose sight of Jesus who leads us in our faith and brings it to perfection. My friends, let us now turn with hope and confidence to our loving Father and lift up the intentions that well up from our hearts. We pray for all religious and civil leaders that the Holy Spirit may bless them with the wisdom to govern in self-giving sacrifice. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all who are ill, homebound, in hospitals and nursing homes, and for their caregivers, that they may know the peace and consolation that comes from serving the Lord in prayer. We pray to the Lord. For all who strive to build a world of justice and peace, free from the threat of violence and oppression, we pray to the Lord. For all the spiritual and particular needs of our viewer audience, we pray to the Lord. Loving Father, source of all life, our goodness and of compassion, graciously receive, we pray, these petitions that we lift up to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, which on the altar of the cross canceled the offense of the whole world, 
cleanse us, we pray, of all our sins, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you placed the salvation of the human race on the wood of the cross, so that where death arose, life might again spring forth, and the evil one, who conquered on a tree, might likewise on a tree be conquered through Christ our Lord. Through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adorn, powers tremble before you, heaven and the virtues of heaven, and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Benedict our Pope and Thomas, our bishop, and the bishops of Canada, and all the bishops, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us exchange the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, not worthy, if you enter under my roof, I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those of you at home, join with me now in this prayer of spiritual communion. O Eucharistic Heart of Jesus, I wish to be united with your eternal oblation to the Father, with each Eucharistic sacrifice being offered at this moment upon the earth. Lord Jesus, come and dwell in my heart. Nourish me with the bread of life. Cleanse, wash, and purify me in the bath of your precious blood. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Having been nourished by your holy banquet, we beseech your Lord Jesus Christ to bring those you have redeemed to the wood of your life-giving cross to the glory of the resurrection, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Our thanks to Louise Turcott from Scarborough, Ontario, whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. If you're interested in making monthly donations using the pre-authorized checking method, please call our office at 1-888-383-6277 for details.